Now, several weeks ago, I made this post on X, formerly Twitter, and a lot of people started following me because of that post, and a lot of people were asking, where's the video? The reason why I didn't make a video on that particular mesh was because it was giving me distortion in the area of the arms and a little bit on the limbs. There is a point where you can no longer stylize your metahuman because the rig is going to start breaking. So how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to transform a metahuman that looks like this into something that looks like this. Now, this video is great if you're an indie dev or if you're a 3D artist that wants to use MetaHuman, especially since a lot of video games are being done with Unreal Engine nowadays. This is one of the ways that game developers are implementing their own characters with the MetaHuman DNA, which if you watch my Dissected series, you know you've already heard that term before, the MetaHuman DNA. A lot of Unreal Engine games are using that, but they're not using the stock metahumans. They're using their um, own characters. And this, what I'm going to show you today, is one of the ways. So if you're not a 3D artist, you're just a gamer, would like to know what makes games run, this is a great video for you. Make sure you stick around all the way till the end so you can know how everything works. Now, for some of my followers that are Unreal Engine experts, I know some of you are going to say, can you just do this with the parametrics? I've tried. I've tried using the parametric sliders. They're horrible. Honestly, I could not get close to the results that I got by spending five minutes in ZBrush using one of the base mesh of the MetaHumans. And all the things I did was in order to create a more appealing character, uh, in this case, a appealing female character that still retains the MetaHuman DNA, still can work with the MetaHuman rig, so you don't have to do anything external or any other of the other crazy stuff that I used to do in Maya. So with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so we are in a new program that I haven't talked about before. Um, by the way, I'm going full tutorial mode for this one, so I'm not here on screen as I usually am, but I'd like to know, do you miss me being here on camera? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. Now, this program is called Wrapped. Uh, it's also called Wrapped 3D. It used to be called something else. Uh, it's from the FaceForm website. I highly recommend this program to do this. You can buy a perpetual license and it's not overly expensive. And I'm going to explain real quick how this program works. This is a node based program, super easy to use. You just load the input. So I have two inputs for geometry which is one for the base, which is the metahuman uh, geometry that I want to wrap around my model. And one that says scan, because I was using scans from 3D store scan when I first set up this file. However, this, this is where the actual target mesh will be. Now I put this note here, the select point pairs, because this is what's going to let the program knows where are the very specific points, which you'll see in a second. Select polygons. Um, this is something I used to have for some reason in this version of the program. It's not as necessary as it used to be. Then is the wrapping node, which does everything. And then is the brush mode to do a little bit of correction later on. So let's uh, look at the base. This is a metahuman base that uh, I got from 5.5. So there is no way to get this combined mesh, as far as I know, from 5.6. And the problem is, yes, you can export it out of the Unreal Engine editor and MetaHuman creator, but it won't be combined. The mesh needs to be combined. You could do it with the MetaHuman to Maya plugin, but it doesn't come combined. And because it doesn't come combined, then you have to do things uh, separately and it, it can be a mess. If you combine that mesh in Maya, you will change the vertex order. And I've already tested this. If you go into Maya, you combine the head mesh and the body mesh and you weld the vertices. When you do that, you change the vertex order. And when you take it to use it as a template inside Unreal Engine with MetaHuman Creator, it's not going to work. It's going to produce a jumble mess. So all you have to do is get this from the Quixel Bridge app, the 5.5 or anything before 5.5, 5 
that geometry is all the same and it would work good here. Now for geometry, I'm actually going to load a female sculpt that I've been making, uh, which is going to be my best base mesh for uh, several characters that I want to start making. So I'm going to load that here and that is proof that you just need the one mesh. You don't need to have a male mesh and a female mesh. You can just get the one mesh for both. And you don't see it because I have the light bulb off, but you can see it here. She is a little bit bigger than the base mesh. We can change that here. I know it's already 0 0.95. That is exactly the same. She is still a little bit taller because she is eight heads, uh, more like heroic proportions. So um, I'm just going to leave her underneath. Hopefully YouTube doesn't get mad at me for certain things that are showing. Uh, we're going to go into select point pairs. We're going to go to the virtual editor, clear everything that I had here from the previous file. And um, from what I've been doing, I'm actually going to clear everything from here. I, I should not be using this now, to be honest. It's just it's part of the setup that I already have here, but I don't need to. I used to select the polygons from like the back of the eye sockets in the back of the mouth. That is no longer needed. Again, for some reasons that I don't understand. But usually what I do, it's like the tip of the nose and the fingers, the index and the pinky always uh, give me some trouble. All right, now we're going to wrap and it's going to do its thing. One of the things that I like about this software a lot is you can see it conforming to the geometry. It depends on what kind of computer you have. Mine is pretty powerful, had a 5090 and a 16 core AMD. So it goes by pretty quickly, but I, I've tested this in my own computer, which I had an Intel uh, quad core, everything was working fine. So it just took a little bit longer, but this program is like magic. As you can see, it wrapped the geometry entirely even if I wasn't using the metahuman topology, this thing is just as close as auto retopology with good geometry as you can get. And as you can see, she has perfect topology all around. If you follow my series, Breakdown AAA Assets, you always hear me talking about topology. You can see how perfect the quads are on her. She's pretty dense, but these are the uh, cinematic portions of the metahumans. Everything looks fine. You can see there are barely any distortions. There may be a little bit something here, and that's why we have the brush. All right, so you can see that everything looks great. And now let's go to the this brush just to make some small corrections here and there. Uh, there's not much that needs to be corrected, to be honest. Uh, just a little bit of stretching that I see. But yeah, everything looks fine, to be honest. Yeah, here, there's this that was towards one side, but everything on her looks fine. What I usually do is this would be my low poly. I know for some people this isn't low poly, this is probably too dense, but I'll be using these characters for cinematics for the most part. And from what we've reviewed on my series, this density, it's quite good, even if uh, we add some clothing and some equipment. It'll still be fine for uh, several video games if you're doing like PC or like current gen consoles. Now, if you'd like to see me do this in the future, let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see more about uh, the characters that I'll be making. Now, one particular thing about this program is it doesn't save to FBX, so you'll have to take it into Blender and turn it into an FBX. However, we also have to take it into Blender to do scaling because the scaling of this character is insane as everything on ZBrush. So let's go into Blender. So I'm going to import my mesh that I just wrapped. And as you can see, the mesh is gigantic. There's also a little bit of faceting that we're going to correct in a second. We also need to import the what we're going to compare it to. So I'm going to bring in an FBX. And this is actually the combined mesh that I got out of Unreal Engine. So as you can see, this is the correct size and this is the insane size that we just got. Uh, right click, just shade it smooth and that'll take care of everything. And now all we have to do is, uh, because everything is very intuitive here in Blender, we're just going to type 0 0.01 
for x, y, and z. All right, and this is the size that we got. It She could be a little bit taller like the other mesh, although what I've tested is if you do it this way, it's not going to affect the position of the joints. I just like the height that I had previously, so I'm just going to rescale her a little bit more. But you can leave her at, at the scale that she was before. So uh, make sure we unhide her and control A to apply all transforms. And now we're going to export her as an FBX. OK, here we are in Unreal Engine. I've already created a new MetaHuman. Uh, I have a video on how to do this, by the way, so I'll leave it in the description down below. If you are brand new to this, uh, just double click the MetaHuman Creator. All right, we load our MetaHuman Creator over here, and we're going to go into Body, and we're going to click on Conform. I've already brought the FBX that we just exported out of Blender. She is right here, and we're going to throw her from Template. And we're just going to do this and uh, just leave it as it is. It says fit from mesh and skeleton. I'm going to click on import. And as you can see, it instantly applies her shape looking very, very good right here overall. And uh, after that, we can just uh, select like a skin and everything. Let's go into skin, see what kind of skin uh, it's applied. And uh, you can see that she looks great. One of the things that I had to also do was change where the belly button was positioned because the way that the normal maps are presented, it looks a little bit weird. I think belly button should be a little bit higher, but you can fix that on some of the maps like I did for her right here. As you can see, the belly button is closer to the shirt. That's something that you need to do in Photoshop. And uh, if you want to see the tutorial, just let me know in the comment sections down below. I'm not going to worry so much about the texture. This is about the whole body proportions. And you can see that everything transformed pretty well. Let's just add a skin for her. Kind of like around here. I think that's good. And let's give her some hair. Do I still have the... I want to give her uh, this looks insane. I'm just going to give her the casual um, classic med human look that we had for females back in the day, because this is one of the first uh, hairstyles that came out. Almost all the metahuman females had this hairstyle. So I'm just going to leave her uh, that way, because again, we're not going to worry too much about other than proportions. And if the rig is working, I'm going to click create full rig. Uh, okay, she is rigged. I had to change her hair because that hairstyle was driving me nuts. I saw that hairstyle way too much. And uh, all we have to do is download the textures. I'm going to download 4K textures because, again, this is just the test, although I highly recommend that you download the 8K textures for maximum cinematic quality. If you're doing a game, uh, 4K or even 2K will work fine, as you're going to see right now. Once the textures are applied, 4K textures work pretty well unless you're going to do extreme close-ups, which if you're doing a game, you probably don't. You'll just do uh, cinematics completely separate. All right, she is uh, complete. And uh, we can actually do a little animation. Let's do body range of motion. Let's hit play. So you guys can see that the rig is working completely, completely good. She is not heavily stylized when it comes to the proportions. However, I do think that she has a little bit of a different proportions than any MetaHuman that you can get here in MetaHuman Creator. If somebody has managed to make something like this with MetaHuman Creator, let me know because I think it takes way too long to do it with the parameters. This in ZBrush, uh, as, as I mentioned in the beginning, it took me like five minutes. If you'd like to see more about this, just let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do the male character next because that's uh, like having a heroic character. Even if you do the preset that looks like Hugh Jackman, I don't think it, it looks great. So we'll have a, a little bit of a better looking, more appealing metahuman right here. 
And again, if you're going to customize your characters, this is the way to go. Very easy way to customize your characters as long as you have that initial um, mesh. All you have to do is wrap it around. You can use the face form program, which I highly recommend. But if you want to go the free route, you can also uh, use Threat Shrink Wrap. I think it's called in Blender. And you, you'll pretty much be doing exactly the same thing that I did. And if you want to do the changes to the MetaHuman inside Blender, because Blender has sculpting now, I hear it's very close to Seavers. I haven't tested. But if you know how to use sculpting in Blender, then you can do everything that I did here completely for free. And as you can see, her rig is working perfectly. Um, I've tried to stylize her a little bit more, like give her longer legs. Um, that unfortunately breaks. This is what I would call the breaking point when it comes to stylization of the female body. Hopefully that clears some doubt uh, for people that um, kind of follow me because of that initial post that I did. I'll have more tutorials about metahumans and like clothing and on stuff. If you want to subscribe for that, I also do videos breaking down the visuals and characters from video games. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you subscribe, leave a like if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching until this point and I'll see you in the next one.